Hi guys and welcome back to Christine at Home. On this platform I will be sharing with you my home renovation journey of my 1930s bungalow and also UK property tips for if you're a first time buyer or second time buyer hopefully they'll be of use. If you have not already please do remember to hit that subscribe button and notification button so you don't miss another update and also remember to like, comment and subscribe if you love this video or enjoy it. Um, without further ado, let's get right into today's video. So in this, this week's video, um, I'm going to be talking about what's happened since our phase one renovation of our annex. So since then, we haven't been able to go any further with putting in the bathroom um, just simply because we need to sort out the drainage from the main house to the annex. So in order to do that we've had to move on to phase two which is to extend our rear extension to six meters. So I'll be sharing with you um, an update of when the diggers have come in to remove all of our back shed and our patio and our pond to make space for the new six meter extension. And um, the builders also dug a trench um, to get the foundation laid for the cement. So I'll be sharing with you an update on that. So far in terms of expenditure, we have given our builder an additional installment of 15,000 pounds to bring in a total spend 55,000 pounds up until this point. And that was for them to, um, you know, buy extra cement and to get things moving, get things moving. So this is day one of our phase two. Um, so today you're going to see us emptying the shed. Um, myself and my husband and the builder had to do this. The builder had was expecting more people that they, they arrived later. So um, yeah, we pulled in family to help us as well. And we moved all the contents of our shed into the annex. So as you can see your husband moving the table. We have just lots of old junk, you know, that we've that we've collected and also like um, garden furniture, lawnmower, etc. That all had to be moved and emptied so that um, the builders can come and dismantle the shed and get ready for the diggers to come. So you can see inside of our shed, it was built before we um, bought the property. Um, so the old owners had it in there and we just, as I said, we just filled up with junk and so much stuff in there. It was useful, but it's ugly as you can see. And we always knew we were gonna knock it down. So we just never did anything with it as we're just saving to make sure that we had enough money for the um, new extension so yeah so so you can see now the shed has now been removed you can see our back door and you can also you can see our french patio doors um the fence between my neighbor and myself um, on the left hand side is still up and that will be coming down the pond will be cleared as you can see the pond and all that patio will be cleared So you can now see the garden patio and the digger um, digging up our pond. Um, all of our fish and frogs were removed at that point and, and we put them into our neighbour's garden. And so yes, it's all been done. So in this picture that I put up, you can see how our garden used to look with the pond and the patio. And now it's all been removed. Jazz is coming down, it's coming for us. Oh, wow. It's coming for the house. Is he gonna bust the house? Yeah. Tell him to stop. So this is still day one guys. The builders have completely 
um, destroyed our patio. As you can see, the patio is gone. Well. Jesus Christ. Can't believe it, but this is day one. The porch, everything is now gone. You can clearly see our back French patio door and our back door. Um, so yeah, guys, it's all gone. And the builders have now started digging the trench. Can't believe, again, this is still day one. So it's now day two. We have this massive truck, which we call the grabber, which comes and grabs all of the um, debris and cement and bricks that we've dug up and takes them away. Um, my builder says this is more of a cost effective way than having loads and loads of skips um, where we spend more money. So I think a grabber, you can hire it by the hour, I'm not sure, but it works out to be a lot more cost effective and you don't have to keep a skip on your driveway all the time. So now you can see we're at the back of the garden. Um, we're pretty much there with build, um, digging out all the trenches. Um, the builders came really early this morning. And so um, I think day two now, all the trenches should be dug for myself and my next door neighbor who I'm sharing the build with. And um, yeah, definitely once that's done, we can get the cement in. past two weeks so as well as like progress and renovation there's also been a lot of drama and we've had a broken patio our french patio doors were broken which we don't mind because obviously we're moving out but we're still here and we want to be here as long as possible um, i know some of you out there that are on a renovation journey you know are staying on site but we decided that once they go into the loft we will move back to my parents house but we want to stay here as long as possible um, so we can make sure that we don't have to stay too long at mum and dad's mum and dad love you but we want to get back in here as soon as possible and um, i do know for some people that as well like they don't have this option they have to re uh, rent out and that can be quite costly at times so i'm really happy that we're able to save money by staying on site as long as possible and then at the last week we're going to go to my parents house who live down the road and so it's a good still a good commutable um it's, good, it's a good communal location for the kids to still go to school, so that's why we decided that. But if we didn't have those options, then obviously we'll have to rent out the place. The other thing that happened this week, which was very annoying, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this if it's ever happened to you, was that our broadband um, fibre optic um, reversion got cut and the builders were um, doing some digging and grabbing um, some rubble and debris at the front of our, our house so we've been um, using mobile hotspot for like the past week and um, you know we won't be able to get this fixed until the 28th of April so it's been so annoying trying to edit on a mobile hotspot um, so bear with me on this one um, but yeah that's the two types of drama that has taken place but nothing other than that we've, um, we're all ready to now lay the foundations and once the foundation uh, foundation cement has dried we'll then be able to start putting the bricks of the walls up onto uh, and start building that so it's day three guys and today is the day that we will put the cement into the trenches which have been dug by the builders who have been awesome and really really quick and they will be filling that up and apparently take should it take them often an hour or two to get done
start looking at our rare extension slider doors and roof lanterns. So it came as a surprise to me, but basically it takes about eight weeks um, to get these, um, once you order them, to get them delivered. So um, that's quite a long turnaround time. We visited um, two design rooms for slider doors and roof lanterns. One was called the first sliding door, which is based in action, and the other one was called um, the Sky House Design, which is based in Amersham. Um, so we visited both, really, really good. We managed to get some, um, give them some dimensions, but not only does it take a long time to um, get your uh, final product delivered to your property, it also takes a long time to get a quote. So both companies said that it's going to take about a week to get a quote, which is also surprising me. Um, I may even thought those were quite instant. But yeah, because they're bespoke and they made, I guess, a lot of calculations and a lot of time before has to be done before they can send us the final quote. So I haven't really thought about this before, but now summer's air and the sun is shining, everybody's getting into the um, summer vibe. I really wanted to have a patio, which has a kind of veranda so that we can use it all year round. But I've really been thinking about ways in which we can use a garden um, during the winter. It's obviously with the UK, it's cold, it rains, and I just want to make sure that we're okay you know to use it the kids can go out there and want a bit of fresh air we have some um, heaters in the patio area so i found out when i went to the sky house design center that there's a system called the louvre roof which is a roof that can open and close depending on the weather which i thought was great because obviously it can provide more shade um, during winter months and, and rainy days and then obviously during the summer months we can get a, a lot more sunlight and sunshine through so i really like that the one I saw at the Sky House Design Team measured six meters by three meters, and that set that can set us back at about twenty thousand pounds. So obviously that's really expensive. So I'm trying to look for cheaper alternatives because I really like the look and feel. And us being able to spend more time outside is still a bonus. So even once the extension is done, we've still got roughly about twelve meter left of garden space, um, and that's including the annex taking up that space. So we've still got about twelve meters left. So, um, yeah, so it should be really, really, really good. Thank you guys so much for watching my latest vlog on our home renovation update. And um, if you did like it, please do hit that like button and remember to comment and subscribe. If you haven't already and you want to catch up on what's happened since up until this point, please do watch my two videos that I will link up somewhere here on um, our phase one and um, catch up and some garden clearing um, but in the meantime guys have a fantastic week ahead enjoy the sunshine and i'll catch you in my next vlog bye